So today we have joining us former Attorney General and Senior Advocate Mukul Rohi to speak to us about the judgment that has come in from the Supreme Court yesterday on the issue of grant of faith and several aspects that the Supreme Court has spoken of. Uh, so just to kick off the discussion, have you had a chance to go through the judgment yet and what did you think? Well, I have seen the judgment. I think the judgment was long awaited. It should have come much earlier. It's a very detailed and well thought out judgment on the problems of bail, which are confronting every court from the trial court to the sessions to the high court and the Supreme Court. The dockets of all these courts are full of bail petitions and a large amount of time every day is being devoted to only bail matters. A lot of time is being taken up. Now the problem which we have been facing for the last, I would say 30 odd years in the judicial system is that the Supreme Court said long back in 1978, following the, the, the constitution of India, that jail is an exception and bail is the rule because you are presumed to be innocent till you are found guilty. That is a part of our jurisprudence following the English and the American system of jurisprudence. Therefore, bail should not be a great controversy in every court if that dictum was followed. Unfortunately, slowly and slowly in the 90s, in the new century, the new decade, the second decade, that is 2010 to 20, slowly and slowly, I'm sorry to say that even the courts have forgotten this dictum of the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court itself has forgotten the victim. And that is what then filters down to different courts. So bail is no longer the rule. In many cases, the arrests are also indiscriminate. The law does not allow that every police officer should arrest merely because he has the power of arrest. So arrest is indiscriminate. Bail is no longer considered as a rule. Therefore, a lot of under trial prisoners are languishing in jail. So in fact, the Supreme Court in this very judgment has said that arrest is a draconian measure which results in the curtailment of liberty and should be used sparingly. This, uh, this is a dictum which is being reiterated. This is not the first time the Supreme Court said. It said so, as I said, in 1978 in the celebrated judgment of Justice Krishna Iyer one of the most celebrated judges of the Supreme Court. It is being reiterated. It is necessary to be reiterated. Because two-thirds of the prisoners in jail are under trial who have spent six months, one year, two years, three years, five years. And the trial is ongoing. So you are, suppose you are acquitted after seven years or eight years, but you already spent five or seven years in jail and under trial. Who is going to give your life back? I mean, I have done cases in the Supreme Court where there are under trials with six, seven, eight years as under trials. God knows what is going to happen to their trial. They are already damned. Their life is half finished. The scar on their life and the scar on the liberty of these people is, is embellished. I mean, it, it, it's a shocking state of affairs. Therefore, it is required to be reiterated. The Supreme Court has relied heavily on the provisions for bail in England and Canada, whose jurisprudence we follow, and ultimately said, look, do not do indiscriminate arrests to the police. Record reasons why you need to arrest, not merely because you have the power of arrest. The High Court should also speedily decide bail petitions. A lot of our uh, under trials are who are related, who are even after they get bail, they are unable to provide security or bonds. That's also another problem. The Supreme Court finally has said a very, very nice and important thing that we should have a special act of parliament only for purposes of bail. Call it the Bail Act. You have a Bail Act in England. I mean, you see cases in England, even of murder and other cases. You see, a person is granted bail even in a murder case, provided he appears, he cooperates and all that. And only in some rare cases, the man is jailed. Let's say a case of extradition. Mr. Neera Modi is in custody awaiting extradition to India. 
that is because it's a matter of relationship of two states two countries it's a very different thing but somebody accused of let's say a robbery in england or something like that will always be granted bail subject to his appearance and all that so there is a bail act in england which says everybody should be granted bail except in very very serious and heinous offences and all that so we should have something like that because different courts at different times are saying contradictory things i can give you any number of judgments of the supreme court which lean in favor of bail and any number of judgments of the supreme court which do not lean in favor of bail now the supreme court cannot speak in two voices at the same time what happens that what happens is confusion in the high court there is confusion in the high court there is confusion in the lower courts so that's the problem we are facing i think this judgment should go a long way in you know removing the cobwebs and reiterating the position of our constitution that liberty is important a person is presumed to be innocent till he is proved to be guilty and therefore by and large bail should be given which should be preceded by the fact that by and large arrest should not be indiscriminate that's the substance of the judgment of the supreme court Right, sir. So we'd like to hear a little bit more of your thoughts on this particular issue of the Bail Act. But before that, like you said, that this is something that's not been said by the Supreme Court for the first time. It's something that's been reiterated. So when we juxtapose that with the kind of liberty cases that we are seeing nowadays come up before the Supreme Court, do you think that the need for the Supreme Court to reiterate the same point over and over again is because the existing laws are not being implemented in a proper manner? See, it is necessary to reiterate these issues because you know, after a few cases or a few years, you know, sometimes things get fuzzy. I mean, even for a lawyer who may have read provisions of the law hundred times, it is still necessary for a lawyer, you know, to read it again. It's like you know, preparing for an exam. You should read it again, put it again in your mind, think about it, lest you forget. I mean, if you don't read things again and again, you are going to forget. Therefore, if the Supreme Court does not repeatedly, you know, lay down this important precedent of liberty, which is the most important part of our Constitution, repeatedly again and again, bring the high courts in line, the lower courts come in line, the police must come in line. Therefore, it is very necessary that at regular intervals, the Supreme Court reiterates. the position of law or in other words refreshes the memory of the courts below and the supreme court itself and for the police and the public that this is the jurisprudence of bail in our country so do you think this judgment can be used by those under trial prisoners that are languishing in jail when they apply for bail before the sessions court because today we saw when the mohammed zubair case had come up for hearing before the sessions court his lawyer had relied on this very judgment saying that there is a judgment from yesterday where the supreme court spoken on this aspect so do you think it will act as a strong enough precedent to tilt of the course. odds in the favor there is no doubt that see ultimately at the at the very bottom level every bail is decided on the facts of a particular case right you can't have one stereotype position because you can't have one size fits all but keeping in view the facts you must also keep in view what is the 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 point what is the pointer in our constitution the pointer in our constitution is presumption of innocence do not have an indiscriminate arrests arrest only if necessary grant bail wherever it is most appropriate in a or a liberal way rather than in a negative way so therefore it is necessary people can rely on it judges must rely on it judges must grant bail and there was a very important observation in this judgment that look the rate of conviction is abysmally low in this country that's the phrase used by the judgment abysmally low which is correct which means if 100 people are under trials and they finally uh, you know they undergo a trial very few of them are actually convicted by the first court some are let off by the high court some are let by the supreme court So you end up with what ten twenty percent or something like that. Now, if that is so, the person has already spent one third, one fourth, one or maybe half of the sentence, or even maybe more than half at times, as an under trial, which is a travesty of justice. But the court has also referred to a tendency of courts, 
which includes the Supreme Court, if I may say. That look, they know that the punishment of conviction is not going to be there. So, and the, 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 the feeling of the court is the man may be guilty, he should have some punishment at this stage. So, so, so bail is refused for the first couple of months or a year with the idea that ultimately there will be no conviction. So let him, let him suffer something right now. So you look at bail negatively rather than positively. I see it every day in courts that this is the thing. The court will ask how many days have been inside? Oh, 15 days, one month, two months, there's not much. Come again after three months. That, that attitude is because ultimately nothing much is going to happen. So he should serve some kind of a punishment right now. That is wrong because denial of bail should never be by way of punishment. Because right. you know, you haven't found the truth. Right. But this is what is neg negatively affecting uh, uh, courts. There's also one uh, very important distinction that has been made by the Supreme Court. Because although they have suggested that within the definition of the word trial, the stage of investigation should be included, but they've made a very clear distinction in bail being granted during the investigation stage versus at the stage of the trial when the matter is before the That's court. Right. See, very often, charge sheets are not filed for a long time. And uh, you say that, uh, uh, you know, actually the law is that you must file a charge sheet in lesser heinous offenses in 60 days and more heinous offenses in 90 days. And if you don't file a charge sheet in 60 or 90 as the case may be, then there is a right to automatic bail. That is called in law a default bail. Then you get it by default of the prosecution. So to overcome this default bail, a nefarious practice has started in all the police departments in the country. And that practice is you file some kind of a charge sheet. Preliminary charge sheet. Yeah, but the law does not say that you will have a preliminary charge sheet. So they file an incomplete charge sheet, which, which should not be treated as a charge sheet. Default bail should actually apply. But the courts are also remiss in their duty because they accept, you see, these half bail charge sheets. Because the last line in the charge sheet says, this is what we have done and we will file a supplementary charge sheet later. The idea is only to get over the bar of 60 or 90 and push in some kind of a charge sheet. So this is actually violating the law. But unfortunately, this is what is going on. So, so you file a charge sheet on the 59th day or the 89th day as the case may be, so that there is no default bail available. And thereafter, after six months, one year, you file one more, two more, three more. So you have defeated a constitutional or an important right of default bail by filing a half bail charge sheet, which is not in accordance with law. The courts also overlook it. The person's right is denied. And then you merely go on investigating for six months, one year, two years, which is contrary to the mandate of the law. The mandate of the law is finish investigation in 60 or 90 days as the case may be. And if you can't finish in a genuine case, grant bail and then carry on. Nobody is stopping the investigation. Carry so on for two years if you like. But so grant. now, if the center takes into, takes into consideration the uh, request or the uh, suggestion that has been put in by the Supreme Court to create this new law altogether, how do you think that's going to streamline this entire process? Well, it would streamline to a great extent. I hope the government looks at it seriously, applies its mind, makes a law and puts it puts in parliament, you can have a debate in parliament, and then a law can be passed. But let me add the last word of caution. The Bail Act is all right, but we must also look, parliament or the government of the day must also look at some of the conditions of bail in some special statutes. Those conditions are extremely hard to meet. The thresholds are very high. It is impossible for a judge or a, or a lawyer arguing for bail to meet the thresholds. And therefore, bail is denied because of those stringent conditions. One of the conditions normally provided in these special statutes is that the judge must find 
at the stage of bail that the accused is innocent. How can he find that unless he has a trial? I mean, he is he, 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 not God to know what, what the position is. And second, the condition is equally obnoxious. That the judge should record that he is satisfied that the accused won't commit an offence tomorrow. How can anybody know that? And I was uh, lucky enough to argue a case which is important called Nikesh Taratan Shah in which these two conditions were struck down by the Supreme Court as being arbitrary and violating of the Constitution. So some kind of a half-baked amendment has again come. Now, you know, if you put these kind of conditions, people will always struggle for bail because these conditions are absolutely illusory. It is impossible to meet, impossible to fulfill. So parliament should also, government should also look at some of these conditions and try to, you know, remove them. See, please understand, the idea should, should be to decriminalize some of these things. I mean, I have heard the leaders say, even the prime minister saying at times, that the idea is to, you know, remove the, the very uh, uh, oppressive compliances of requirement by law in the companies that this that and that. So decriminalize some of these things. We have done well in uh, removing in unnecessary compliances uh, where self-declarations are accepted. That means people are believed to be truthful. You should not look with an approach that every man is uh, a badmash or you see he will do something wrong. So the government has done a good thing in providing for self-declaration. So you, you, you treat the person as innocent till or innocent or decent or, or forthcoming till something else is proved, you know, something like that. Uh, so in the same line, we should remove some of these conditions. They are not creating a good image of the country. And the Supreme Court said that it looks as if you are, you know, going towards a police state. What does that mean? Police has immense power to arrest. They are going on with indiscriminate arrest, which is not required. You are flooding jails. The courts are looking at bills negatively. That's how it goes up to the Supreme Court. So the whole atmosphere is somehow initiated, which, which ought to be removed. And I think the judgment is a good shot in the arm. So you're saying that the Bail Act will not be enough unless we take one step further uh, and also yeah, change yes. the conditions yes, in the special absolutely. enough. Everybody must be proactive. With that word of caution, thank you so much, Mukul Rodgi, sir, for speaking to India today.